take the mask and the costumes off, y'all. You don't need them. Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love, and I believe God wants to encourage, admonish, and uplift his people's heads, uplift our spirits in Jesus' name. I am reading James chapter 5, starting at verse 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Basically, just it's a yes or no situation. Just be a person of your word, period. Promises are not necessary. Promises are not recommended by God. Amen. Is any among you afflicted? Check this out. This is the key. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let him pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up, and if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. This is where we as the body of Christ tend to fall short. We want to put on that happy face. We want to come to church with our hands raised, our church uh, our attire. We want to look sharp. We want to look clean. We want to look uh, beautiful. Yeah. We want to impress, dress to impress, right? But what God is saying is make yourself vulnerable. Quit putting on airs. This is for the body of Christ. Whoever takes the time to watch my videos, there ain't many of y'all out there on YouTube. But remember, take the mask and the costumes off, y'all. You don't need them. God sees you clearer than you will ever see yourself. He knows the hidden motives of your heart. He gets down to the bone and marrow of every secret intention. So he understands what makes you. He understands what breaks you. He understands what raises your spirits and he understands what crushes you. God knows you and me better than we will ever know ourselves. So you don't have to put on airs in the body of Christ, and you don't have to put on airs with God. There are times when God is waiting for you to admit stuff that's going on in your heart. And you're so busy being religious and sanctimonious that you are doing everything but addressing your real issues. See, God is a God who heals. He heals the broken in heart. He is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Some of you have a difficult time expressing how you feel, but you know it. You can sit still for two or three minutes and introspect. Be quiet and introspect. And you know all is not well in Denmark. You know that everything inside is not sitting pretty. You know you're not happy with some things. You know that if you were to really tell it, half the time you just want to cry or half the time you just want to holler. 
Some of you are born again Christians and you're just as empty as can be. You have no clue what direction you're going in. You have no idea what you're calling, what your callings and elections are. Some of you don't even have a clue what your giftings are, what your strengths or weaknesses are. Because you're so busy being busy. You're so busy about the affairs of this world, the affairs of your life, paying the bills, doing your duty, that you don't take the time to sit and invite God to examine you. And one of the reasons you don't want him to examine you is the same reason nobody's going to come in my house if my house is messy. Pride. We just, it's, it's something, I don't know what it is, what makes it so hard to open our hearts up. You know, one of the hardest things, let me share this with you, it's coming to me right now. I never even meant, I never even meant to mention this. One of the hardest things for my husband to deal with, being independent as he was, in spite of his blindness, was when he couldn't walk anymore and he could not get himself to the restroom in time to avoid making a mess on himself. And when I would begin to clean him, he would say, this is a dog on shame. I'm a grown man and I can't even, I so shut up all that silliness. That's what you got me for. Ain't about you being a grown man. You more man than all the men I've ever known. Don't even try it. You and my father were the two men in my life. So I don't care if you have to wear a diaper for the rest of your life, Mr. Man. You are the man. And you just have to get over the need for a diaper. That's nothing but pride. Don't even worry about it. I'm going to take care of all my little babies. So don't you worry about it. And he would look at see, you don't mind doing this, dude. No, I love you. So, see, some of us, we have a difficult time showing our weaknesses. We have a difficult time admitting that we have those areas of weakness. Some of us are too proud to say we're afraid. Some of us are too proud to say, I feel like I'm just weak. Some of us are too proud to say, I don't know if I'll ever get close to God. I have a difficult time tapping in. I have a difficult time getting deep into him. There are times when I tell the Lord, and I've been, goodness, I've been walking with the Lord since 1981, 40 years. In September, September 6th will be my 40th year with the Lord. and. There are times I, I have to tell the Lord, you know, Lord, I love you, but sometimes I just, I don't feel like praying. Or there are times I said, Lord, I don't feel like reading your word. I'm going to play the man because I just, I don't feel like fighting at the word. I'm just so sleepy. I don't feel like reading. I'm lazy today or I'm tired today. So, there are times when I tell the Lord, I don't want to do so-and-so for so-and-so. So give me the desire because I know that's nothing but my own selfishness. See, when you are able to admit not only your imperfections, but the uglier components of who you are, you'll get a lot more help from God. Because you're not telling him something that, oh, wow, that never occurred to me. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. You're not telling him something he doesn't know about you. You're probably realizing something he's been trying to show you for decades. One of the hardest things for us to do is press in. And I'm not talking about three or four hours of yap, 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 burning the Lord's ears off. I'm talking about sitting down and just being vulnerable. It's difficult. 
If somebody walks in the room and we're not fully dressed, we immediately cover up, don't we? Well, sometimes we're like that with God. We cover. We don't say, Lord, examine me. Lord, show me if there be any wicked way in me. Because we really don't want to know if we're really honest. A lot of us don't want to know that. We don't want to deal with that side of me. We don't want to deal with the, the bad and the ugly side of self. We don't want to deal with it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a little transparent. This week, I struggled. I was a little weepy. And I go through these moments where I feel like I'm not doing much with my life. I feel like I'm not that productive. I'm not that useful to the kingdom. I'm just taking up space. And I have to constantly rebuke the spirit of depression. But I can't deny that I feel that way. And I'm fighting the tears if you're wondering why I'm quiet. But there are many times I ask the Lord, do I really have to be here a long time? I'm not doing that much. I'd rather be with you in heaven. That's just my personal, I struggle with that a lot. I love the Lord. I thank him for blessing me with good health in spite of the challenges I had to come against. But God has really helped me to improve my health. He has helped me in so many ways. My life is a miracle. But I want to do more. And I'm too tired. And I don't want to live out the rest of my years being tired and old. So there are times when I feel like I'm too tired to be of much use to God. And I'd rather just go on and be home with, with him. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And yes, I ask him that. I'm just sharing that with you to let you know there are times we have to just sit down and tell it like it is. And just be real. Cry your eyes out. Get the Kleenex. <laughs> Blow out of both nostrils. Whatever you got to do. But God knows you're struggling in the areas you're struggling in. There are times I feel lonely. Not lonely like I don't like being alone. I can be alone very comfortably. But I like hanging out with friends. And right now, I'm pretty much in my life, I don't really have many. So it's really a treat being able to hang out with Pat. But we have to travel to see each other. When Peter came up here to play Scrabble with me to get his booty whooped, he had to drive hours to get up here. <laughs> I'm being funny, but but the hours, it's a long way. The people that live right here in my vicinity, within two miles, they can't be bothered. They got their own family. They're good. So I love fellowshipping with people. So there are times I struggle with that. There are times I say, Lord, sometimes I don't even want to do ministry. I just want to have a life of some playtime. I mean, you have to learn to be real. Years ago, I remember when I was on a fast and I asked the Lord to show me myself. The Holy Spirit told me I was jealous of somebody. Another time, the Lord showed me in a dream that I was resentful of being looked over and passed over because of a sore spot that had happened when I was six years old. And he took me back to that experience that I had totally forgotten about. See, God wants to get inside of us. This walk with the Lord is not only to avoid hell. 
and get to heaven. God wants to be our buffer on the face of this earth. He is the lifter up of our head. He is our strength. He is our very present help. He is our refuge. You don't understand all that God is when you don't utilize all that he has. When you begin to utilize all that he has for you, you realize how much easier your life can be. I don't have to wallow in self-pity because I have God to pull me up. I don't have to sit and be angry at this one, that one, and the other one because I know that if I ask God in an instant, he will take that anger out. I don't have to walk around with my lip poked out and a fat attitude because I know that I can just say, God, this is nasty the way I'm feeling. Please take it out. Please remove it and give me your peace. The more you lean on God, the easier your life will be. God is a painkiller. God is a healer. God is the cast that stops you from getting more damage. God is your raincoat that stops you from getting wet. God is your medicine. He stops you from getting sicker. He's your psychiatrist, your psychologist. He is your dietitian. He will teach you how to eat for your health sake, if you really want to know. God will warn you who to and who not to hang with. God will slam the doors in your face to let you know, I don't want you going that way. Go this way. God is your traffic cop. He'll tell you to stop when you want to rev up your engine and barrel forward. God is your, <laughs> he's your bodyguard, your divine protector. I mean, every possible thing you need from God, he is. Years ago, when I was going through healing with my, uh, I was I was going through a lot of healing from the rejection I dealt with when I was a little kid. And most of my insecurities, the stuttering, I mean, I stuttered horribly, was a result of us all moving into the same house. My mother and her kids from her former marriage, Mary and my father, who had knocked her up six years prior with me. And she had come out of the insane asylum. And now we all get bunched up in this four bedroom apartment. And the crazy part was I felt like an outsider in my own home. Even though the man of the house was my father, I felt like an outsider. My mother made me feel like her life would have been totally blessed if I had never been born. So I walked through my life feeling like an apology, feeling like the oops that messed her life up, that brought her misery. Then when I get to school and the kids are making fun of me and putting me down and calling me fat and ugly and stupid and my mother treating me like I was retarded, I had the lowest self-esteem. So. Well, after I got saved, here I am at 27 years of age, still feeling the pain of my childhood misery as if it had happened yesterday. And I started asking God, can I live without feeling all this? Is there a way I can just be free from it? You know, do you really lift the burdens? Do you really relieve the oppressed? Do you really heal the broken in heart? Would you do it for me? And as time went on, I noticed I started having dreams. One of the scariest dreams I ever had was something 
I would never do to my mother. But in the dream, my mother said something and I hauled off and I slapped her and I slapped her and I slapped her and I slapped her. And you'll have to see the video to see how I was slapping her backwards and forwards. And with every slap, I was enjoying it. The venom that was in me was making me enjoy hurting her. And when I woke up, I cried. I said, oh my God, Lord, I'm so sorry that I even had a dream like that. And God spoke in my spirit and said, I want to heal that. I said, Lord, heal everything you can. I've been miserable all my life. I want to know what true peace, true love, true this, true that. I said, Lord, take the license, take the reins, go in there and heal whenever you want to. Sure enough, after a course of about seven or eight years of dreams, 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 and arguments, and dreams, and, and conversations, and hugs, actually getting a hug from my mother in the dreams, I realized, oh my goodness, I'm not hurt by my mother anymore. I'm not angry at my mother anymore. It, it just feels like God wants to barrel deep inside of you guys and do a real deep work. But you got to be willing to get buck naked before him. You got to be willing to open up. Because if you never open up, he's not going to bulldoze his way into those secret areas of your pain. He's a gentleman. You must invite him. And if you don't want to deal with it because it hurts too much, guess what? It'll hurt for a minute. And once he works on you in that area, that area is a done deal. You don't have to go back and redress that again. He's very thorough. The one thing I never got from my mother is that 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 affection that hug the caressing i looked at people and people when mothers would sit their children on their laps and they would be playing and just enjoying their child and i used to wonder what does that feel like for your mother to enjoy you be, being their child what must that feel like i wish i knew what that was like now god blessed me with a good father and that's what enabled me to open up to my heavenly father. I thank God for the father he gave me. But God had to undo a lot of damage. That my Now my mother was a good mother. She taught me a lot. She really did. But she was too emotionally wrecked to give me a healthy kind of love. And the Lord showed me where she was damaged. And that's why. And one day I looked up and I said, Lord, tell mama I understand now. So the healing process takes time, but God heals us in onion layers. And he, after he peels one section, that section's healed. And then he goes down a little deeper and then that's healed. Okay, that's done. Close book. Now we go on to the next chapter and that's done. But he does it when he's ready. So we think that we have to learn pain management. I think one of the most heartbreaking things I ever heard on YouTube was listening to a panel of pastors and ministers declare in front of all these people and online that there are some wounds that will never be healed. That's a lie from hell. God can heal any wound that's inside of you. If you're willing to let him. There's not one wound in your life, in your spirit, that God is not able to heal. When it comes to your insecurities, God can remove every single one. You're looking at one. I do not feel insecure 
anymore. Why? God. No other reason but God. I do not feel needy anymore. I don't have to have a man in my life. Why? Because God has got me so full. I'm not looking around. Somebody love me. Somebody reassure me. Somebody reaffirm. No. When God is your source, and you really are feeding off of his love, you are fulfilled. You don't need a human being to prove that you're worthy to be on the face of this planet, to tell you how pretty you are or how handsome you are or how wonderful you are. No, God can do that all by himself. Yes, yes, we do need interaction. I'm not saying we don't. All I'm saying is the real source comes from God. So it's not going to be long. I just ask you, I plead with you to take the time, go to God and ask him to put that thing that you see in the mirror looking back at you. Put that thing back together again. Because you're looking at a mess. But God looks at where he wants to take you. He's looking at the beauty. And he will give you beauty for ashes. Amen. Seek him. The potter wants to put you back together again. Be real about how you feel. Hmm? Yeah, take the mask off, chuck it in the trash. You don't need it. God bless you as you open up and avail yourself to all that God has for you.